welcome back in last class we saw how to characterize the fatigue damage of uh, bituminous mixture in the laboratory using four point beam bending test now we will see how to characterize the uh, same bituminous mixture using an indirect tension test so as the name indicates we subject the bituminous mixture to a tension but we apply a compressive load and subject uh, the bituminous sample to a tension so like we uh, we have seen this indirect tension testing procedure a detailed procedure recommended by ASTM in calculating the resilient modulus of a mixtures so the same uh, test can be used here pro, uh, for calculating or simulating the fatigue damage of a bituminous mixture what the only difference is that resilient modulus or a material characteristics properties uh, if you wanted to do it in a uh, linear regime or any material characteristics behavior if you are conducting any test for characterizing the material behavior you do not need to apply or induce the damage in a material. So, it is sufficient enough if you apply only a, a few cycles of a loading for characterizing the material behavior, but if you want to simulate the damage in a material you may have to apply a continuous loading. So, that the, the material damages and find out what is the damage behavior after damaging. So, here in a indirect tension testing uh, we have an e, we have an EN standard recommendations for conducting an indirect tension testing. The EN standard states that we prepare a bituminous sample subjected to a repeated have a sign loading in a load in a uh, load control way that is in a stress control way so you control the load in a have a sign pattern and measure the deformation so you apply a load in a diametrical plane uh, as shown in this picture and measure the deformation horizontal deformations so you apply load here the load which you apply is a compressive in nature and you measure an horizontal deformation here which is at um, uh, along the horizontal plane. So, this is as per an EN standard. Now, when you use an ASTM, so ASTM for uh, testing a resilient modulus, we, you have already seen that there are two strain gauges kept at along the uh, surface. One is along the horizontal plane and other is along the vertical plane as shown here. So, you have a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. So, when you keep a strain gauge to measure a deformation along an horizontal and vertical plane, you you will have two deformations. Suppose, if uh, this along the horizontal plane we represent it by h and this along a vertical plane we represent it by v. So, the measure of this two deformation will help us in calculating the Poisson's ratio value. This in detail you have already seen. So, this Poisson ratio value can be accurately obtained to a mixture if you measure uh, two deformations, but this EN standard if uh, recommends the use of uh, Poisson's ratio as some assumed value of equal to 0.35 for all mixtures. Because, so, if you want to measure use a Poisson's ratio measured value just use this two strain and uh, if you or otherwise you can assume a Poisson's ratio value to be 0.35 for any further calculations. So, in this indirect tension test we are subjecting the sample to a repeated loading in a uh, stress control loading or a load controlled uh, way. So, that repeated loading is an have a sign load. So, we have already seen that this repeated loading uh, if you test the mixture in a either in a load stress control or a strain control way. If you do it in a repeated uh, stress control load there will be a strain accumulations at each and every cycle. So, on repeated loading the strain accumulation increases then we may not be able to differentiate between a rutting and a fatigue cracking fatigue damage here. So, uh, we will see how uh, this issue is addressed in an indirect tension test. So, when you subject the material to a repeated loading uh, on, along uh, uh, a diametrical plane as shown in figure A, the stress in the material due to this loading along two plane, one is along a horizontal plane x and other vertical plane y will be uh, varying along the di diameter will in this pattern. So, now for this stress 
we will find out what is a defam uh, we will find out what is a deformation and find the strain value due to a repeated loading so uh, uh, en standard recommends a few testing procedure for conducting this test so, for a preparation of a bituminous mixture, if you use a nominal maximum size aggregate of 25 mm, uh, we need a minimum of 40 mm height sample and diameter of 100 mm. So, if the nominal maximum size aggregate is 38 mm, we use at least a minimum of 16 mm height sample with a diameter of 150 mm. So, this is a minimum height, minimum dimension prescribed by an EN standard. So, you prepare a bituminous mixtures of this sample size. You can either use a gyratory compactor for preparing this uh, sample or you can use a slab contact, uh, slab co compactor or it can even be a field sample. This is a main uh, advantage here. See generally four point beam bending test, we generally use a flexural testing, we generally use a beam. The beam size is as we saw before, it is 360 by 63 by 50 mm. So, this slender beam coring in a field is uh, difficult. So, if you want to test a core sample, you can use this in, uh, indirect tension test. So, so, it can be even a field sample or it can be a lab sample, lab prepared sample, but the dimension of a sample has to be uh, in specific to or defined based on the nominal maximum size aggregate you use. So, now prepare the sample subjected to an indirect uh, load, indirect tension test. So, now the load you apply is a repeated have a sign compressive load along the diametric, plan, diametric plane with 0.1 second loading and 0.4 second rest period. So, you apply a repeated load, the load is like this, the loading time here recommended is 0.1 second followed by 0.4 second rest period. So, as we said earlier with the load control test, there will be accumulation of uh, uh, accumulation of residual stress or residual strain at each and ev end of every loading. To avoid this accumulation of a residual strain, this EN standard recommends to conduct this test with a 0.4 second rest period. So, this is not something like a continuous loading which we do it for a 4 point beam bending test. We give a rest period at each and every load cycles. If you are not giving a rest period, the response will be like this. For instance, if you are conducting a uh, test for this continuous loading, this is with time and this is stress. If you are conducting the test with a continuous loading, the deformation accumulation there will be a residual deformation or residual strain at the end of each loading. So, this residual strain starts accumulating over a time and so this is what we do it for a rut, uh, rutting characterization of a bituminous mixtures. So, it will be difficult here to differentiate between a rutting and a fatigue cracking. So, EN standard recommends uh, to conduct the test with a rest period. So, for a uh, Conducting this test, the sample is subjected to a have a sign loading with a rest period with the amplitude of starting from 250 kilo Pascal. So, this amplitude you select should be sufficient enough to result a strain at least of 150 micro strains. So, you start the test with a 250 micro strain, 250 kilo Pascal and uh, may go increase this from 250 kilo Pascal if you wanted to know the response of the material at different strain levels. So, repeated have a sign loading with a rest period of 0.4 seconds is what we apply it and this is what the response you get it. See, if you measure only the horizontal deformation, this is the load you apply and this is the horizontal deformation you get. In case if you fix a two strain gauges like this, you apply a load here, you have a horizontal strain gauge as well as a vertical strain gauge, you will get two, def two deformation, one is horizontal deformation and other is a vertical deformations. 
So you will get a two deformation here. Now we let us focus on the vertical horizontal deformation because this horizontal deformation along the horizontal plane will be further used in determining the fatigue damage of the bituminous mixtures. Now if you look into the horizontal deformation variations, you can see that as the, lo as the loading continues, there is a have a sign deformation, have a sign kind pattern of deformation, but during a rest period, there is a recovery of a def recovery here, recovery of a deformation and um, so this, this res residual deformation here. Some calls is at, as a permanent deformation also, uh, like you know what is permanent deformation and what is residual deformation. So now this residual deformation accumulates or increases as the load progresses, as the time increases. So now uh, if you construct the entire uh, horizontal deformation curve pattern, so you can see how the horizontal deformation varies, the peak value alone, the peak value alone varies as the number of load applications. So this is a horizontal deformation, the peak value will be increasing as the load increases and at one point of a time where the sample cracks completely, the deformation increases in a, a drastic way. So when you zoom this portion, your, uh, this will look something like this. So here we measure a horizontal deformation for an application of a repeated load as a function of number of cycles. So with this horizontal deformation, how to obtain the fatigue damage? As I said before, we subject it to the repeated loading and as the in load increases, the deformation increases. And this is a point where the sample cracks completely. A complete crack in the sample as seen here. So there will be a complete crack in a sample. So now we have to define a failure criteria for the estimation of a fatigue life. Now you can see that as a EN standard specification says, this is number of cycles. The X here represents a number of cycles and Y here represents an horizontal deformation. Delta H suppose, delta H increases with the number of cycles at the point where the sample completely cracks, find out the number of cycle, this number of cycle is treated as a failure criteria. So this NF if is given as a fatigue damage or a fatigue life of a bituminous mixtures. So this NF can be related to a strain or you can determine at a different strain levels and fi can finally construct a, uh, st a strain NF relation plot and use it in the mixed design or use it in the design, design of payment. So now to get this you need to find out what is strain in the mixture when you subject it to an indirect, uh, when you subject it to an indirect tension. So you subject the bituminous mixture to an indirect tension by applying a load here. So on an application of this load, the, you, you can see that the stress in the material along a horizontal plane X and a vertical plane Y varies in this pattern. So along an horizontal plane on this surface you can see a zero and it increases the maximum value occurs at the center. And it is a symmetry about both sides. Likewise in a vertical plane due to a vertical compressive load along here you can see the stress here to be more uniform. So the stress sigma naught in the horizontal plane maximum value can be calculated using this expression. Here in this expression P indicates the peak load and T indicates the thickness of a sample. And this is diameter. You may have a different notations for a thickness diameter, but this notation is as such taken from an EN standard. 
So, you can calculate a sigma using this expression and epsilon using this expression. Here you have delta h, this is horizontal deformation and each calculated at each cycle. So now a new value here is a Poisson's ratio. As you have uh, measured only one deformation, then you can assume a Poisson's ratio value as per Ian standard recommendation to be 0.35. If you have calculated a horizontal deformation as well as a vertical deformations, you can measure using two strain gauges something kept like this. In case if you have conducted an experiment and measured a two strain, uh, strain values along an horizontal and a vertical plane, you can calculate a Poisson's ratio as you have already seen this in the resilient modulus calculations. Uh, we are not seeing in detail how to calculate this Poisson's ratio here. There are many other methods of post processing used in uh, calculating the fetting damage. For example, Kem et al recommends to identify a fetic number of life, a number of load cycles corresponding to 2.5 mm deformation, 2.5 mm of total horizontal deformations. So, subject the sample to a repeated loading. So, just identify the point where the horizontal deformation is 0.25 mm. So, we know that the horizontal deformation as a delta h as a function of number of cycles increases in this pattern. So, uh, identify the number of cycle corresponding to the deformation of 2.5 mm and this number of cycle nf this corresponds to the fatigue damage in a mixtures. So, we say that the dam uh, damage occurred when uh, deformation, uh, deformation reached 2.5 mm. And another approach is as sim similar as what we used for the four point beam bending test that is an energy ratio approach. So, energy ratio we know it is defined as a uh, defined based on the dissipative energy. So, you calculate the energy dissipation of different cycle and uh, determine the energy dissipation with respect to the in, uh, initial cycle. So, and take that ratio this suppose if it is energy ratio is defined as E d n by E d i, where E d i represents energy dissipation at the initial cycle, initial cycle and uh, E d n represents energy dissipation at any cycle at any nth cycle. Take the ratio and plot the energy dissipation as a function of number of cycles, energy ratio as a function of number of cycles and you will get the energy ratio in as a two stage curve. Now, this the point where this slope changes may not be drastic may gradually occur find out the point where the two sl uh, slope changes in the energy ratio curve and identify this to be the number of load cycle to failure. So, now there are two, uh, at least a three approaches we have seen how in post processing of a indirect tension test data. Now, we have seen how to simulate the fatigue damage in a laboratory and calculate the number of cycle corresponding to the damage of a bituminous mixture. Now, we will see how to implement or how to how to use these fatigue damage values in the design. One simple example is given as a MEPDG design here. Um, we have a number of cycles that we have obtained in the laboratory with a at a different strain levels. So, at different strain level uh, the laboratory test was conducted and the number of cycles corresponding to the failure was uh, measured. And you can see that in the logarithmic scale, this is both in the log scale. So, in the logarithmic scale, you will have a straight line. So, this straight line, this data to be has to be implemented in a design by, by using a material functions values. 
So, we, you, uh, you might have uh, already seen this equation NF. So, now this NF, you can see this uh, K1, K2, K3 functions are a material constants. This NF equation is what we used it in a mechanistic empirical payment design and uh, for the design of uh, bituminous layer fatigue. So, now this beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 is a field parameter, epsilon is a strain and E is a dynamic modulus value. So, we have seen in detail about this NF already in a before classes. Uh, now, this N to predict this K1, K2, K3 value. So, we use this laboratory simulated plot and predict this K1, K2, K3 value. So, it is not a constant value, it depends upon the material behavior. So, we predict this K1, K2, K3 value using this NF equations. You can directly use any nonlinear curve fitting tool. Any nonlinear curve fitting tool, maybe in a MATLAB or any nonlinear curve fitting tool and predict this k1, k2, k3 knowing the nf and the strain value here. This k1, k2, k3 will go in an input as a design, uh, design of payment. So, let us quickly summarize what we learnt it in a fatigue damage. So, we have seen that there are two types of uh, the cracking in a payment that will structurally deteriorate the payment. One is a bottom up cracking, another is a top down cracking that or other longitudinal cracking. So, there on subjecting the payment to a continuous loading, there will be a, there will be a tensile strain. The critical locations of a tensile strains are one at the top of the payment or nearing the top or other at the bottom of the payment. This induces a damage in the payment. The damage over a period of time accumulates and informs the crack in the payment. So, the damage in the payment. Uh, if you want to predict the damage in the payment, you should know the characteristic uh, damage behavior of a bituminous mixtures. So, to simulate the bituminous mixtures in the laboratory, we conduct different tests either in a flexural mode or in the uh, IDT indirect tension test mode or direct tension compression test. So, you need to subject the uh, sample to a repeated loading in a flexural uh, uh, testing. So, we have seen in detail how to conduct the four point beam bending test and we have seen a different post processing method for some of the post processing methods are based on the flexural stiffness. And some of the some other post processing methods are based on energy dissipation. We have also seen in detail how to conduct an indirect tension testing and from that indirect tension testing, we have seen a post processing method of uh, obtaining a fatigue life of a bituminous mixtures. Fatigue life of a bituminous mixtures generally we denote it as F and we have also seen that this NF value differs based on the post processing method we adapt and this post processing uh, uh, post processed data, this NF value. We can give it as an input in a design by using a determining the material constants K1, K2, K3 as we have seen as an example for an MEPDG design. Thank you. Thank you for your time.